dinosaurs ruled the earth for over 165 million years. However, there were many animals that lived before, during, and after that were just as formidable. We've picked 72 that dominate the others. In this show, we will talk about these dangerous animals, including when they lived, what they ate, their weaponry, and how humans would fare if these creatures were still alive. From the largest venomous animal of all time, to birds that could take out animals 30 times their weight, to a pterosaur that could kill a T-Rex, this is 72 Dangerous Animals Prehistory. Megalania prisca, also known as Varanus priscus, grew up to 23 feet long and at the absolute maximum weighed up to 4,200 pounds. It lived in Australia 2.5 million years ago to 11,000 years ago. However, it's possible this lizard may still be alive and well. Megalania was quite possibly the most powerful and dangerous apex predator of all time. Not even the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex compared to Megalania in terms of its superiority. Megalania was the world's largest terrestrial lizard of all time, and also the largest venomous animal of all time. Megalania's venom was a hemotoxin and would have caused prey to bleed out very quickly, resulting in a faster death. The venom caused muscle paralysis and was also an anticoagulant. Megalania was over twice the length of its relative, the Komodo dragon. It had no predators and no competition. There wasn't a single animal alive at the same time as Megalania that could have killed it. It ruled Australia, whereas all other continents were dominated by mammals. The mammalian carnivores, notably marsupial lion, stood no chance against Megalania. Marsupial lion's teeth and claws could not penetrate Megalania's thick skin. Megalania was mostly an ambush hunter, but could also give chase to fast-moving prey for short bursts of time. Megalania likely waited at watering holes or game trails to ambush its prey. All it needed was one bite to cripple its prey. Even if the prey escaped, the venom would eventually kill it, and Megalania could follow it around at its own pace, using its forked tongue to pick up the scent until the creature dropped dead. Megalania would have eaten carrion as well as hunting, and was much stronger than marsupial lion, allowing it to steal its kills. Just like the modern Komodo dragon, Megalania likely ate 80% of its body weight in a single meal. Then it wouldn't need to eat for weeks, or even months. Megalania was able to take down the largest marsupial ever, Diprotodon, with ease. Megalania could use its massive tail to trip prey or smack it and knock it over, likely breaking the bones of its target. Megalania had a crest in between its eyes and serrated teeth. It had remarkable eyesight as well as a killer sense of smell. Early humans lived at the same time as Megalania, and they definitely came into contact with each other. Human weapons were no match for Megalania's thick skin, with one exception, fire. Megalania would absolutely obliterate a human victim. Its bite would be extremely crippling. Even if somehow the person's leg wasn't ripped off by the Great Ripper, they would still bleed to death in seconds from an anticoagulant venom. It would be tall enough, however, to target a human's waist or even lunge for their head. While Megalania was standing upright on its hind legs, it would have been 10 feet tall. Megalania's claws would have been the size of an adult human's fingers. The most frightening thing about Megalania is not any of these things, however. What's truly scary is that there is a high possibility Megalania still walks the earth today. There are numerous reports and sightings every year of giant monitor lizards in Australia. Some people report cows being mutilated and ripped to shreds. It's easy for Megalania to hide, as there are massive areas of Australia that are unexplored lush forests and swamps. Most Australians live close together in small areas. There is so much unexplored land left in Australia. There are also so many areas that are completely unknown to humankind. There are plenty of large animals still living to support Megalania's diet, such as kangaroos, buffalo, cattle, and horses. Critics try to dismiss these sightings of giant lizards as crocodiles. However, the people who claim to have seen one insist it was a goanna, aka monitor lizard. They are able to differentiate between a crocodile sitting on the shore or floating in the water from a lizard walking upright and far from the water. But surely, if these beasts still lived, 
there would have to be a large population somewhere in order for them to reproduce regularly and continue to exist, right? Wrong. It is highly likely that Megalania was, or is, capable of parthenogenesis, that is, reproducing without mating. All it needs to be is a single surviving female Megalania out there somewhere in the Australian outback, and the species can continue to exist. Plus, apex predators, as seen with Host's eagle, never have very high numbers so that they don't decimate prey populations. Adding to this, most living monitor lizards retreat as soon as they detect a human's presence. Monitor lizards can detect stimuli in their environment from up to seven miles away. Megalania would vanish long before any humans showed up in their location. Just because we haven't filmed one doesn't mean they aren't out there. Extreme angler and freshwater detective Jeremy Wade once said that if any river monster hasn't been discovered yet, Australia is a place it would be hiding. You can apply that to any monster. And this is coming from the guy who proved the Loch Ness Monster exists and caught it. Like the saying goes, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. For quite some time, it was even believed that gorillas were mythical creatures from African folklore, up until one was shot and documented. Megalania could well be the same. What do you think? Is Megalania still rampaging through Australia to this day, hidden from the public view? Or is it just a made-up fairy tale, like the gorilla? Megalania takes first place for now, but can a gigantic sea scorpion overtake it for top spot? Jake Alopterus was up to 11 feet long and weighed up to 400 pounds. It lived 444 to 402 million years ago in Europe, South America, Australia, and North America. Jake Alopterus was the largest of the Eurypterids. In fact, it was also the largest arthropod of all time. A partial Jacolopterus claw fossil was found that would have had a total length of 17.9 inches. Its body was 8.5 feet long, however its claws would have added another 3 feet to its length when fully extended. Jacolopterus was an apex predator and used its compound eyes and claws to its advantage to capture prey. Its claws had many denticles on them that helped it hold on to struggling prey. Jacolopterus preyed on many smaller Eurypterids and fish. It would have been highly agile and would have had great maneuverability in the water. Jacolopterus was able to make sharp turns and even hover in the water. It could swim fast and even give chase to prey items. It had binocular vision like that of other predators. The photoreceptors in its highly specialized eyes were 70 times larger than a human's. Jacolopterus fossils have been found in what would have been freshwater environments rather than saltwater. Like other arthropods, Jacolopterus shed its exoskeleton as it grew. It was a direct developer, like spiders, meaning it didn't go through extreme morphological changes after hatching. Since Jacolopterus didn't have a stinger on its tail to inject venom with, it would have incapacitated a human by spearing them with its tentacles on its claws and then ripping them to pieces. Horrible way to go. This colossal arthropod doesn't have what it takes to beat Megalania. It takes second. But what about a colossal squid? Tusotuthis grew 35 feet long, counting the tentacles, and weighed up to a ton. It lived 80 to 66 million years ago in North America. Tusotuthis is known from fossils found in the western interior seaway of North America. Its name means crushed squid, referring to the condition of its fossilized pen. It was originally thought to be a true squid, but now it is believed to be a gigantic version of the vampire squid. Tusotuthis had massive eyes, like the modern giant squid, as well as eight arms, two tentacles, and a large bone-crushing beak. It traveled using jet propulsion by shooting water out of its siphon. It could defend itself by shooting ink out of its siphon to confuse and blind its predators. It preyed on fish, cephalopods, and marine reptiles that were smaller than it. It attained sizes close to that of a modern giant squid. Tusotuthis could have snatched a human with its tentacles and crushed them or fed them into its mouth, where its beak would tear them apart and crush their bones. Tusotuthis doesn't quite have enough power to compete with Megalania, though it is more dangerous than Jacolopterus. It takes second place, pushing Jacolopterus to third. Up next, a carnivorous bird that may have became vegan. Diatrima was 7 feet tall and weighed 350 pounds. It lived 60 to 45 million years ago in Europe, in North America. Diatrima is also called Gastornis. While they are both correct, Gastornis is more correct. However, we refer to this giant bird as Diatrima because it sounds more badass. Paleontologists weren't very nice to this bird. First they took away its name, then they said it was most likely an herbivore. Based on the newest evidence, Diatrima was most likely an herbivore due to the lack of sharp claws in its footprints 
and the fact that its beak was too blunt to be a carnivore. It is hypothesized that Diatrima used its beak to eat tough plant matter, instead of horses. However, it is just as likely that these are invalid claims. It didn't need sharp claws on its feet for killing prey, as many predators, such as herons, wolves, and lizards, as well as many others, kill without using their feet. And so what if its beak wasn't sharp? It could have easily taken out prey with a single blow. A blunt object causes much more damage than a sharp one. Supporting the carnivore theory, it was likely an ambush hunter or pack hunter. Diatrima had one hell of a bite. It would have had enough force to crack open large bones. The features of its skull were overbuilt for eating plants. Diatrima's skull resembled that of terror birds. However, Diatrima was actually very closely related to ducks and geese. At the time in Europe, Diatrima was the largest terrestrial tetrapod. Whether these monstrous birds were fierce, carnivorous, killing machines, or just oversized nutcrackers, either way, they would have still been able to kill a human. The huge feet and force of a kick could kill you, or a blow from its beak in the wrong place would be equally as fatal. Diatrima can't compete with the other prehistoric monsters in this episode. It takes fourth place. Megalania is still holding strong at first. Incoming. Swimming crocodile that resembled a mosasaur. Dacosaurus grew up to 16 feet long and weighed one ton. It lived 163 to 112 million years ago in Europe. Dacosaurus was a crocodilian from the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous periods. Unlike other crocodiles, Dacosaurus had serrated teeth. These teeth were much larger than that of other Metrian rinkids and were signs that Dacosaurus was an apex predator and are comparable to a killer whale's teeth. Dacosaurus had extremely strong muscles for biting down. It was also capable of twist feeding, or tearing chunks off prey by spinning around, similar to a death roll. Dacosaurus would have preyed on creatures much larger than itself, instead of small fish like the other Metrian rinkids. It was fully aquatic and most likely gave live birth rather than laying eggs on the shore. Like other Metrian rinkids, Dacosaurus was adapted for life underwater. It had a highly streamlined body and a fin on its tail to help propel it through the water. Dacosaurus strongly resembled a mosasaur with its flippers and tall, deep skull, unlike that of other crocodiles. This medium-sized crocodile was easily capable of disemboweling humans. Dacosaurus may have been a force to be reckoned with, but it can't top the continent-ruling super predator Megalania. Dacosaurus slashes its way into third place, pushing Dracolophorus to fourth and Diatrima to fifth. Up next, a creature that looks a lot like a crocodile and is named after a plant. Redondosaurus grew up to 30 feet long and weighed 26,000 pounds. It lived 221 to 201 million years ago in North America. Redondosaurus was one of the largest species of phytosaur. Phytosaurs were similar in size, appearance, and lifestyle to crocodilians, however they were not the same thing. They developed these traits through convergent evolution. Phytosaur means plant lizard, as originally the phytosaur fossils were thought to belong to plant eaters. Redondosaurus had an elongated skull and fed on large vertebrates that came to the water to drink. It was among the last of the phytosaurs and had more advanced features than the earlier phytosaurs. Redondosaurus was heavily armored, even more so than crocodiles. As with crocodiles, Redondosaurus would have made short work of a human. Its forefoot head could chomp down on a human with enough force to break bones. Redondosaurus may have been larger than Megalania, but it wouldn't have been anywhere near as dangerous. It takes rank number two. Megalania is our episode winner by a long shot. Megalania's near instant working crippling venom would have made short work of its prey. One bite to any animal and it was game over in just a matter of moments. All human attempts to kill it would have resulted in spears being deflected. Experts say that not even clubbing it to death would work and it would simply kill off its attackers one by one until they had all fallen. It was also likely bulletproof and not even the marsupial lion, the land mammal with the strongest bite force, could pierce its neck to sever the spinal cord. Megalania was, and always will be, known as the undisputed ruler of Australia. It moves on to our finalists. Up next, a creature with eyes bigger than a basketball, a cephalopod larger than a truck, and a synapsid with huge fangs. Giant squid, on average, were larger than the largest of colossal squid. The largest colossal squid size was estimated from a beak found in a sperm whale's stomach. The squid was estimated to be 23 feet long and 1,090 pounds. An average adult giant squid measured 39 feet long, the record giant squid measured 49 feet long, and weighed nearly one ton. 
It is assumed they grow even larger. The interesting thing is that giant squid only live to be five years old maximum. From dinosaur times, there exist bones of a whale-sized ichthyosaur, Shonosaurus, arranged in strangely regular geometric patterns. Furthermore, marks resemble tentacle suckers can be found on the bones. Modern-day octopuses arrange bones into patterns just like these. Paleontologist Mark McMinimum thinks that the reptile was killed by an enormous cephalopod, a hundred foot long triassic kraken, which was intelligent and arranged the skeleton like that deliberately. In each episode, we will rank the creatures from one to six on a scale of how potentially dangerous these creatures would be to humans, and the winner of each episode will show down with the other 11 finalists in the season finale to decide on which prehistoric creature was the ultimate human killing machine.